Rose is, is just a wonderful person to, to start to address these issues from even a different perspective, but some of the perspectives you mentioned already, Rose is Deputy Secretary General uh, at NATO since uh, 2016, but uh, also has a long uh, career, very senior positions inside and outside government, where she was intimately involved in debating many of the issues that you, you, you began to speak about, especially with regard to uh, nuclear weapons and other things. But uh, Rose, if I could ask you to join us and, and reflect a little bit from your perspective uh, on what these issues mean, I I well, in your current role, uh, but for all of us, Rose, thank you so much. Thank you. Ian. Thank you. Thanks. Gee, I feel kind of bad after that really cool presentation that I've got this podium up here. You guys are going to have to hang with me because uh, actually for NATO, uh, this is an important new area and we're taking it extraordinarily seriously. And uh, I did put down on paper some initial thoughts working very closely with our entire team at NATO. But we are grappling with these issues, and I'll talk about how we are grappling with these issues during my brief remarks that I think will help to kick off our conversation, just as Brad's excellent presentation has helped to kick off our conversation. There are two things I really agree with uh, about the presentation we just saw. One is that cybersecurity is an issue for our time. Indeed, it's a global issue for our time. So, Brad, I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, on that. And the other one I really liked a lot was uh, the one about we cannot fight the threats of today with the tools of the past. We must grapple with the technological challenges that we face across a very broad spectrum. And one of the points in my speech is that in the old days, it wasn't so very difficult. You'd see a line of soldiers coming across, coming across a, a borderline and you'd know something was up, conflict was underway, or there'd be a massive explosion, an attack, you'd know something was up, something was underway. What NATO is grappling with today is so much of it is in the hybrid realm, where we don't know where the borderline is between peace and war, between conflict and war, between crisis and conflict. And so if you'll bear with me, I would like to put a couple points out there that I'm going to have to read. And I didn't bring a cool presentation along today, but maybe next time, all right? So with that, I did want to underscore that for almost 70 years, NATO has been in the business of security. NATO is a political military alliance of 29 independent democracies. And I want to place the stress on democracies because we are, as democracies, inherently linked to the rule of law. And we take that very, very seriously. Our shared goals are to protect our citizens from aggression and intimidation by other states and to defend the principles of democracy, individual liberty, and again, the rule of law. Our armed forces benefit greatly from modern technology and increasingly they rely on cyberspace, but they are not immune to cyber risks. This prompts fundamental questions. What do these technologies mean for our security? And what do they mean for our defense? So much of what, what uh, the, the presentation we just saw focused on were the problems in the civilian world. But I agree that they can provide profound dangers to civilian society. But they are also very much a problem for our defense. So what do they mean for NATO as a defensive alliance? Traditionally, as I said a moment ago, aggressive actions were something you could see happening. But the cyber warfare challenges that we're facing today are really something that must be grappled with in quite a different way. Rapidly developing technologies, including artificial intelligence, driving autonomous systems, are changing the nature of conflict. NATO must be able to operate effectively in a new and constantly changing environment. NATO's approach to cyberspace embraces our overall mandate and principles, and supports our broader deterrence and defense mission. Moreover, NATO promotes a stable and peaceful cyberspace. And I do want to underscore that also for this audience. Our goal is to nurture, develop, and strengthen a stable and peaceful cyberspace. Here, uh, at this podium today, I wanted to talk about three of the ways in which NATO can contribute to the global effort to promote greater stability in cyberspace. The first one is reaffirming the rule of law and exercising restraint. The second one is supporting national resilience. And the third is fostering deeper cooperation. And in uh, all of these areas, I think we already have a profound 
partnership going on with industry, about which I'll talk as I wrap up my remarks. But let me just make a few quick points here. First, on the rule of law and restraint. Cyberspace does not have to be the wild, wild web, despite recent incidents and well laid out uh, in the video we just saw. And as you know, the United States just today, or just yesterday, I guess it was about uh, midnight our time here in Brussels, the United States attributed the not Petya attack to the Russian Federation. So uh, it's wild, wild uh, uh, environment out there, but in our view, there are rules that apply. Back in 2014, NATO allies agreed that international law, including international humanitarian law and the UN Charter, apply in cyberspace. This was reaffirmed during NATO's Warsaw Summit in 2016. Not everybody agrees with this among nation states. That's one important area we have to, uh, we have to debate and discuss. And I do very much agree with Brad's remark that we have to debate and discuss whether there are a fact holes are in fact holes in that body of international law that need to be, uh, that need to be uh, taken care of. NATO's mandate is strictly defensive and we will continue to follow the principle of restraint and act in accordance with international law. Restraint is important since actions taken in cyberspace may have un unintended consequences. There is also the possibility for miscalculation given it's intrinsically anonymous and asymmetrical nature. Moving forward, we need to apply international law in cyberspace, and we must continue serious discussions on the specifics of how we do that. Now, let me turn to resilience, and again, very, very glad to hear about the work that Microsoft is doing in that area, as well as other industry partners. But NATO is already doing a lot to help countries become more resilient. That goes for our 29 NATO allies, but it is also a top priority for working with our partners, of which there are more than 50 across the globe. NATO is helping allies and partners to boost their resilience against a wide range of threats, both conventional and hybrid. We are investing in cyber defense, continuing to develop new capabilities, build capacity, share best practices, and enhance information sharing. The Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Tallinn, Estonia supports this work, in particular on education and training. And the Estonians, as you know, were really among the first to suffer a profound national level attack in 2007. And so they're very good at thinking through these problems. And their center of excellence based in Tallinn has gone from strength to strength as it has developed in recent years. One tool for enhancing our resilience is the NATO Cyber Defense Pledge, which was adopted in 2016. The pledge has helped to focus us. It's helped to focus strategic uh, level attention on cyber defense and to promote and prioritize investment. Importantly, it also includes the essential human dimension, that is training and education, building up the brain power that can help us inside the NATO Alliance to better tackle these problems. National implementation of the pledge is ongoing. Progress is going to be reviewed at the next NATO summit in July, so our heads of state and government will have a chance to look at how well we're doing and consider about further improving the level of protection, further improving resilience and preparedness across the alliance. It's truly a priority, and we must really ensure that we're prepared to respond to cyber threats and challenges, no matter where they emerge on uh, the defense spectrum. Finally, cooperation. NATO can help to foster deeper, deeper levels of cooperation. Global challenges need global solutions. Within the Alliance, we aim to enhance cooperation and build trust. We have a number of tools to do that, including dedicated points of contact in each of the 29 allied countries. These enable fast information exchange as well as assistance to improve the prevention, resilience, and response to cyber incidents. And NATO cultivates cyber defense partnerships. We have more than 40 partnerships with non-member countries and with international organizations such as the European Union. This is critical, critical for success. We also work with industry and academia, and we train together to share information and exercise with our partners. NATO has a long history of cooperation with industry, and I wanted to take a moment to thank Microsoft for its active engagement with NATO and our industry cyber partnership. NATO has benefited on several occasions from your insights and your analysis, 
be it through briefings to allies or your participation in, in our expert events and workshops and through events such as this one here today at your beautiful new center. So we look forward to more of that in the future. We recognize that NATO is just one part of a, a really growing and we hope growing quite large ecosystem in cyberspace, one that is, I think, really um, enriched by diversity among its membership. As an international organization, NATO does not create norms or international law. States do that, and we welcome and support activities that feed into the development of, uh, of broader and more sophisticated international law. In particular, we support the work undertaken in other international fora, those uh, in the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, for example, where they've been working on confidence building measures, and in the development of voluntary norms of responsible state behavior in the United Nations group of government experts. These are both important venues in which the states have expressed their views, in particular in, at the UN group, on the applicability of law in the international realm to cyberspace. Now more than ever, we need to reinforce these efforts, build on them, and build a more transparent and stable cyberspace. Broader efforts, including initiatives by industry and academia, help to spur discussion among policymakers and inform state practice. While it's ultimately states that craft international law, industry has an essential voice in the debate around how we use and shape cyberspace in the future. Here, I would add that many uh, that industry has not only a voice, but also has a responsibility to set the highest standards by designing secure products and services. And so I'm very heartened to see how Microsoft is taking this responsibility seriously. So ladies and gentlemen, as I wrap up, I just say that for almost 70 years, NATO's essential mission has been the defense of um, our member states. That remains unchanged. Now we have to take it to a new level. That's all there is to say about it. So I welcome this debate and discussion today. Thank you for your patience for uh, my podium here. <laughs> Next time, I'm going to bring a cool presentation. But thank you very, very much indeed. Look forward to our discussion. <laughs>